Welcome to Magical Curiosities. Today I am so excited to show you something I've been meaning to make for a long time. It is a moon phase wall pendant. I've seen these all over Pinterest. I think it is free people and urban outfitters that make them. There may be other places. I really like the thick metal ones. I am not very, I don't have a metal saw. And um, so I am doing this with clay, but I think they look pretty darn good and pretty darn close to being metal done with clay. And because they're thick, they look really substantial and beautiful. Um, I think it looks really cool at nighttime with the candles glowing on it. And I actually made two of them. The first one I made didn't turn out as well. It's not hammered looking. Um, and so here is the first one I did. It has some air bubbles, but it's still good enough to hang. Not good enough to sell or anything, but um, I'm going to show you um, my process on how we do it. Let's get started. All right, then let's get started. So we're making this with polymer clay, and I'm familiar with the Sculpty brand. Um, there's Sculpty 3, Primo, and Souffle that I've seen a lot in all the craft stores. Um, the Sculpty 3 is much more soft, a bit cheaper, um, but it doesn't hold its shape very well. It is great if you're not used to working with polymer clay because Primo, um, which is more expensive and, and holds its shape really well, is kind of hard to work with. It can be kind of crumbly to work with at first, but um, if you can handle it, go ahead and use that, especially if you have a pasta roller, then get the Primo. Souffle is soft too, but I suggest Primo for this unless you do not have a pasta roller and need something soft, then I would go with souffle. So here's the reason that I did two of these. The first one, um, I tried to make just flat and with no texture to it. And the air bubbles just really, really rose a lot while I baked it. And this just didn't look so good in the end. It looked kind of amateur. So I decided to just go ahead and remake it. Anyway, that's why the air bubbles are so important to try to keep out from the very beginning by not incorporating through just smashing. You want to do everything you can to try to keep the air from just getting out in there in the first place. I almost forgot to mention this, but if you are rolling it through your pasta roller, I have it on a setting of one or two. I'm not sure exactly how thick that is, but I would say it is somewhere between an eighth an inch and a quarter inch. Um, you want it to feel pretty thick. And while this does use a lot more clay, um, it really makes it look a lot more substantial and expensive. I've seen people make these out of um, sheet metal. And while that looks pretty cool and it is real metal, it looks almost as thin as like a shiny metallic paper. Um, and, and I feel like the thickness of this almost makes it look like it was cut out of a really thick chunk of brass. And so in a way it almost looks to me more real than the real metal ones and definitely more expensive um, because of the thickness. If you're using a rolling pin, um, try to keep the thickness even. Um, maybe you take out a ruler just to see how thick it is. Um, it's definitely easier to keep it thick with a rolling pin. It's kind of hard to get it really thin, but um, make sure there are no really, really thin parts. Okay, so I used a, um, a jar lid, like just a canning jar lid for my cookie, um, <laughs> for my cookie cutter. And it worked pretty well, but I can tell you, if you actually have some cookie cutters, they will cut it so much cleaner and make your job so much easier. You won't have to spend this time smoothing out the edges. And you really need to push it through very hard, especially with it being the Primo, so that it goes all the way through. If you get it just part way through, then it'll have really jagged edges. So really push all your weight into it and make a clean cut on your thing. I used a regular size mason, I mean a large mouth sized mason jar lid and a regular sized mason, mason jar lid for this project. So the big one and the small one. This one's my full moon that's going right in the middle. I'm just going ahead and putting it on the tray to get it ready for texturization later. Okay, so you just do it exactly as you did before using your wide mouth jar or your larger size round cookie cutter. 
And then I took a sheet of paper and I just cut it the length of my, my large circle and I folded it in four. Um, so the, the fourth, a fourth of it from the edge is where I use my smaller circle and push in to make the crescent moon. So I just use it that way. You can measure it with a ruler and just keep it consistent how far you want to do it from the middle. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe an inch. I don't know what you want to do. I did a quarter of away from the side because I couldn't even find my ruler. So that's the way that I measured it. Put it right on your tray, nice and smooth. I'm trying to smooth out the edges as you can see there and keep it in shape. It can flop shape and you don't want that tip to be pointing outwards. So shape it up. So the next um, moon phase that I did, I just folded it to half of the size of my cookie cutter and use the smaller one inside the big one to cut it. But you could totally just use a straight edge and make half a moon if you wanna do that type of shape instead. It just depends on if you want the rounded edge look like a bite's been taken out of it or if you want that half moon look. I just decided I wanted some small circles, maybe representing stars um, at the top and bottom. If I had a star cookie cutter that was nice, I might have used it, but I don't know what happened to them because I used to have some tiny stars. But I'm just using these small circles at the top and bottom. It kind of makes it longer, and I really like the look of it in there. So as you can see, there's two of each kind of crescent and two of the small circles and one full moon circle to go in the middle. I started texturizing here, but really I'm gonna skip to the next part I did because that should come first, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about the texturizing. In the original one that I made with Sculpty 3 that didn't turn out as well, I was making holes in them with a little pin, um, and just that was gonna be where I hung it from. I feel like the new way that I did with this other one looks a lot more elegant. And it's not that much harder. It's a little more work up front, but it's easier to put together in the end. Um, you get the eye pin from the jewelry section, or you can make one out of wire. Um, but it's just a straight pin that has a circle on the end to attach your jewelry chain or your string, whichever you want to use to attach it. Um, so you want to give it a bend. I give it kind of a lightning strike type of bend to help it stay in the clay because you don't want it just pulling right out with weight. So give it a bend, push it right into the clay, and then get some more clay, just little tiny strips of it, and cover it up. You want to really smooth out those, those strips that you put on so that it doesn't have a seam because it will show in the end if you have a seam before you start doing the texturizing. So using whatever tool you want, a ball tool, um, I use the end of a really, really large paintbrush the, that has a rounded end to it. But whatever you use to smooth out um, uh, something rounded is what you'll want to use and just really kind of smear out the edges of it. And then um, your rounded tool, maybe it's a ball tool or like mine, the big paintbrush thing. Um, it's kind of the roundness of a marble, the size of a regular marble size. You just tap it and tap it and tap it and tap it and tap it. If you use a smaller one, um, I don't think it really looks as realistic as, as um, the larger one, just because most hammers are a little bit bigger, most rounded hammers. So... You just tap it and tap it and tap it until every single portion of it is covered in those little taps. You, if you have any blank spots, it just doesn't look quite as nice. You want them to overlap and overlap and overlap. Here I'm showing in the light so you can see all those dents. Okay, on the crescent moon, the most crescented moon, I decided to put it in the really skinny part of the crescent instead of um, down in the fat part, um, just because of a design choice. Um, so keep it not quite as bent, but you still want to bend it so it won't pull right out and do that on both sides. And then my third one is on the outside part of it on the um, fat part. So there's three holes. 
on the crescent moon. One to hang from the middle and the other one to hang on the outsides to hold the little tiny moons. On the larger crescent, I didn't do three holes, I just did two, so that it hangs straight from there and then only does the triangle with the, the skinny crescent at the bottom. So make sure that they are very centered so that it hangs um, nice and straight. Put it in, smear in the clay so that there is no seam, and then get your texturizing in. So it's hard to see with this light, so I'm trying to make it shine on it. But you can see those do not overlap yet. This is before I put the things in, when I was first texturizing. Um, because they don't overlap, they just look like dots. Um, you really want those little dents to overlap and overlap and overlap. So it takes a whole lot of tapping. Like I said, what I'm using is just the end of a paintbrush, and it's a really fat paintbrush, so it's almost the size of a marble. You could actually use a marble, but it would be hard to hold it. Um, but they have round ball tools. I have one of those. I don't know why I just didn't use that. Um, but they have round ball tools in the polymer say, clay section. So when you're buying your polymer clay, you could just get a round ball tool or look around your house for something that's about that shape. And just tap and tap and overlap and overlap. Let's talk about mica powders. This one is called Color Pour, and I got it from Joann's. It's probably the most cost effective. It comes in a few different colors. Um, I have also got some Perlex. This, these come in a um, medium container, a large set of them that you can get from Michael's Arts and Crafts, and probably my favorite set that I have, but kind of, kind of pricey, so use the coupon. Um, you can also get um, large things of Pearl X from, I think, probably Michael's too, but I get mine from Hobby Lobby. Um, and that's what you can see in the very front of my thing with the purple. These ones that come in the tiny little cases, I also got from Hobby Lobby, and they are really cost effective because they come in very small containers. And honestly, I've had them forever, and I don't think I've run out of any of them yet, and I use them for a few different things. So um, it's fun to get those. I think this is two sets of them you can see in there. Um, as you can see, I'm a little addicted to mica powder, and so I've gotten every one that I can find. But um, those big containers are great for if you're using a lot. And this project, honestly, uses a lot of it compared to most projects that I do because it's a lot of clay, and we're covering it completely, not just a little bit. So I decided to go with Brilliant Gold as my color. It's a very, very fine micro glitter. Some of them are a little bit bigger and like they might be called sparkle or macro. If it has the word sparkle or macro in it, you probably don't wanna go with that because it won't look like a real metal if that's the look you're going for. It'll look like sparkles. Um, so the finest you can get of glitter, um, of micro glitter to get on there, the better. This one's called Brilliant Gold and you take a very fluffy brush, like a makeup brush, or if you have a fluffy art brush, use that. Um, make sure it's very clean and doesn't have another color on it. And just fluff it into the side. Just get it in every crack and crevice. It's looking beautiful and shiny. Um, let's go ahead and start baking. The, you want to look at your baking instructions on your package. This is 275 for 30 minutes for every quarter inch, and that's for the Primo. If you're doing Sculpty 3, it, it tells you to do it half as much time, but the same degrees, so 275 degrees for 15 minutes. But if you're going to air either way, air on more time, bake it longer. If you underbake, it is brittle. If you overbake, as in bake too long, the worst that could happen is it discolors and it's really not going to discolor by doing it even twice too long. Um, it'll be stronger and more flexible. So err on doing it longer. Once it's out of the oven, um, it is really flexible and you might go, oh my gosh, what's happened? This is so weird. I don't want a flexible thing, but it honestly will harden up. It will keep a little flexibility, but it won't be that rubbery looking. So here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need some really large chain, unless you wanna just go the easy way and use like a silvery embroidery thread or a gold embroidery thread. That would be probably easier. Um, 
but I've used a really large chain that I got from the jewelry section at Hobby Lobby. Um, it is a aged brass type looking one. Um, I also got some large jump rings to match and you're going to want to get two um, needle nose pliers to be able to work with the metal pieces. Uh, measure about how long you want it by putting all your moons out and then um, take your two needle nose pliers. I should be using real ones. I've got the wrong kind here. But take your needle nose pliers and separate one of the links in the chain to open it up. Um, and you can put it on the jump ring. I already attached the jump ring on this one um, onto the hole. And this is the older one, the first one that I made that has the air bubbles. So you can see I put the jump ring on the hole out of camera. I didn't have the camera on when I did that. But you just put that on and then put the chain on. Measure how long the chain is. Um, you can just put it next to the other chain to measure it. Or a more accurate way to measure it for something like this would to be to literally count each link. Um, but I just kind of um, laid it out and, and then picked up where it ended off. Then you separate those again and do that again and again until you have one on each piece. And there we go. So lay it out. You've got a chain between each moon. This one is the horizontal one. Um, and I needed something to hang on both sides of it. Um, I have this floral wire that I decided to use just because it was just the right color. Um, kind of a subdued gold. Um, but you could use something else like a key ring or a lobster clasp um, like this. I didn't have one in gold, so I, want, I wanted to use what I had on hand, and I didn't have anything larger in gold on hand that I could use. But you just need something round to be able to hang it on a hook on your wall. Um, if your chain was really large, then maybe just the, the ring on your chain would work. But mine is, um, I don't even know where you would get one that large. Um, so you're going to want to start by cutting a piece of wire about two inches if you're going to do it this way. Then with these round nose pliers, you make a small loop around. Um, once you've got the loop around, you want to twist it back on itself. So it looks almost like a six or a nine right now, but you want it to look like a lollipop. Um, and I apologize when I get very detailed, I, I haven't learned how to stay on frame yet. Um, since I'm new to making these videos. But as you can see, it looks more like a lollipop here instead of a six or a nine um, by bending it in the middle. You do those little loops on both sides. I did mine two times around, but you really only need to do it one. It's just up to you. Um, and then just bend those two loops into each other. Um, you'll stick the jump ring or, or the chain from the end of your thing onto those two little loops. And then the loop that it has that you're holding, that I'm holding with my thumb there, that's where the hook on the wall is going to go. You just connect them with the jump ring um, from the chain to the loop holder, or just put the chain directly on it, and you have a place to hang it up. Um, you just repeat this on the other side if you want it horizontal or just do it once if you want it vertical. Okay, the other one's out of the oven and laid out how we want it. We just need to measure our, our chain to see what length they need to be for each one. Okay, I have them all laid out where I want them to go. And you want to get your two needle nose pliers and... Um, Grab the first chain that you're going to put onto your jump ring. Take one in each hand on the side of the chain. Not jump ring, the chain. You don't even need a jump ring here. Um, open it up by pushing one up and one down so that the chain link is open. And then slide it onto that eye hook that you had placed right into the clay before and get your needle nose pliers again and close it up. I am so clumsy with 
pliers and jewelry. I bet you'll be a lot better, especially if you've worked with jewelry before. But you just want to, you know, it's just a circle of wire that you need to open and close around the other one. And you really do need two pliers to make it possible. You can't do this with your fingers. So you do need two small pliers. Just re-showing me closing this ring. Um, I was trying to push them up and down and it didn't quite close all the way. So another little trick is sometimes you can just kind of pinch it. You don't want a gap in the wire, but be careful not to squeeze too far or else you will um, crimp the wire. You just want to pinch it shut so there's no gap in the loop. So to make the wire wrap for the crystal, um, I just stick a long piece of wire in, wrap that up around, um, get the long side and wrap it round and round and round the crystal. You can do it nice and tight. I'm just doing it quick and dirty. And then at the top of everything, you want to make a hole to put it through. Um, just using your round nose pliers, you make a hole just like the other holes that I showed you how to make earlier. So then you make a hook, just like the one I showed you um, on the horizontal first moon phase thing. You make a hook to go on the top. I decided to hang it straight from the top of this little moon instead of adding any length of chain. And you add it to the top and you've got something to hang it from. And I just love it here in my daughter's room. I've got it all staged with all our magical stuff over here. Um, and she's got the star wall that just goes perfectly with the astrological theme. And isn't it pretty in the dark? Look at that. Um, the one over here on this other side of the wall is the first one that we made that doesn't have the divots, the, the hammers. While we have this magical stuff out, I wanted to show some of it to you. We've got some potions. We've got witch bottles with crystals coming right out of them that sparkle and shine. This one has druzies and crystals. Um, let's see, I really like this one. It's really sparkly. We've got um, alchemy egg, pretty tins to put your money or trinkets in. This bottle is a Ravenclaw inspired bottle. I made a whole set of four, of all four houses. That one's a mermaid inspired bottle and some other crystal bottles. Here's the potion and how it looks when you shake it. It's hard to see in the dark, but it's kind of got this swirliness to it, which is kind of cool. And that's done with the mica powder that we used on the moons. Um, we've got flying keys on the wall. We've got beaded spiders as well. And then over on her desk, we've got some of the more gardeny stuff. This little house you can put things inside of it because it's a jar little tiny fairy garden and a teacup the little mushrooms with faces the little mushroom jar crystal jars if you want to see any of these in any video tutorial coming up just let me know which one you want to see and i will try to make that a priority in my tutorials thank you so much for watching and for subscribing i sure love you guys bye